hello guys welcome back to this channel this is scan city academy youtube channel and in this video we are going to talk about a very important topic called variation now in our daily lives we come across situations where two or more quantities are related such that a change in one quantity results in a change in the other quantity now this is what we call variation now variation refers to the relationship between two or more quantities in which a change in one quantity results in a change in the other quantity and these quantities are represented with variables now let's consider the relation y equals 5x a change in x will result in a change in y now the variable or the quantity which remains unchanged is called the constant and it is usually denoted with the letter k now in this video we are going to talk about two types of variation we are going to talk about the direct variation and the inverse variation now if you are new here consider subscribing to this channel because we have a lot of information right in this video now let's move ahead and talk about the first type of variation which is the direct variation now let's consider the relation y equals kx now y and x are the variables or the quantities and k is the constant let's assume that the values of x are 1 2 and 3 and the value of k is equal to 10 now let's find the corresponding values of y so let's draw a simple yx table we have 1 2 and 3 for x now from this equation y is equal to kx and we have k to be 10 so we have y equals 10x now from this equation we are going to find the values of y so for x is equal to 1 we have y1 equals 10 times 1 which is equal to 10 now for x is equal to 2 we have 10 times 2 which is 20 And for x is equal to 3, we have 10 times 3, which is equal to 30. Now, what do we notice here? We realize that as the value of x increases, there is a corresponding increase in the y values. Now, let's focus on x equals 1 and then y equals 10. As x increases from 1 to 2, we have a corresponding increase that is from 10 to 20 for the y values. Now let's look at their ratios. Now 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2. And then 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2. Now what this primarily means is that the increase of both the x values and the y values are of the same ratio. Now let's focus on x equals 3 and then y equals 30. Now as x decreases from 3 to 2, we have y decreasing from 30 to 20. Now 3 divided by 2 is equal to 1.5 and then 30 divided by 20 is equal to 1.5. So what this tells us is that the decrease of both the x and y values are of the same ratio. So we can conclude that for direct variation, an increase in the x values resulting an increase in the y values and a decrease in the x values resulting a decrease in the y values. Now given that y varies directly as x or y is directly proportional to x, we can write this mathematically as y varies directly as x now this is called 
the proportionality sign or the proportionality symbol and we can replace this sign by an equality sign where we introduce a constant so we have y equals kx so for direct variation if y varies directly as x then you have y equals kx now let's look at some other forms of relation that may exist so for the first one we have y varies directly as x so that is going to be y equals kx now if we have y varies as the square of x now this is equal to y equals kx squared if we have y varies as the cube of x then it's equal to y equals kx cube if we have y varies as the square root of x then it's equal to y equals k times the square root of x so these are some other forms of relations that you may come across now don't forget that if you come across the phrase y varies directly as x or y is directly proportional to x they mean the same thing this is what you have here now let's solve some questions on direct variation so for the first question we have if e varies directly as i when e equals 100 i is equal to 20 now we are going to find i when e is equal to 300 so to solve this problem let's first of all put down the initial and final values of e and i respectively so we have initial and then final now this is E and then we have I so for the initial value of E E is equal to 100 and then for the final value we have E that is 300 now the initial value of I we have I to be 20 and then we are looking for the final value of i now to solve for i or to find the value of i we first of all need to write the relation that exists between e and i now e varies directly as i so we can write as e varies directly as i and we are going to replace the proportionality sign with the equality sign so we introduce the constant so we have e equals ki now we have the initial values of e and i which are 100 and then 20 so we are going to i mean fuse those values into this equation now let's call this equation equation one now because we want to find the value of k let's make k the subject so we have e equals ki now we divide through by i and we have k to be equal to e over i now the initial value of e is 100 and the initial value of i is 20 now 100 divided by 20 is equal to 5 so we have k to be equal to 5 this is the value of the constant now our aim is to find the value of i now we have k which is 5 and then the final value of e is 300 so we are going to use this equation now we are going to find the value of i so from equation 1 we are going to have 300 that is e is equal to 5 which is k 
times i now we divide through by 5 and we have i to be equal to 300 divided by 5 now 300 divided by 5 is equal to 60 so we can write 60 here as the final value of i so now let's talk about the second type of variation that is the inverse variation now for direct variation we notice that an increase in the x values resulted in an increase in the y values and then a decrease in the x values also resulted in a decrease in the y values now two quantities are said to be inversely related if an increase in one quantity results in a decrease in the other quantity and vice versa so for instance if y varies inversely as x or y is inversely proportional to x we can represent that mathematically as y is inversely proportional to x now we are going to replace the proportionality sign with the equality sign and then we introduce the constant so this is going to be y equals k times 1 over x now this is the same as k over x now what this primarily means is that an increase in the x value will result in a decrease in the y value and a decrease in the x value will result in an increase in the y value now let's assume that the values of x are 1, 2, and then 3. Now we want to find the corresponding values of y if k is equal to 10. So we have the yx table and then we have values of x as 1, 2, and then 3. So from this equation, we have y to be equal to 10 over x. Now for x equals 1, we have y equals 10 divided by 1, which is equal to 10. For x equals 2, we have y equals 10 over 2, which is equal to 5. And for y equals 3, we have 10 divided by 3, which is equal to 3.33. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 10. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 5. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3.33. So we notice here that as x increases from 1 to 2, there is a decrease in the y values that is from 10 to 5. Now when x decreases from 3 to 2, there is an increase from 3.33 to 5 so this is what we call the inverse relation so in inverse relation an increase in the x value will result in a decrease in the y value and then a decrease in the x value will result in an increase in the y value now having this in mind let's solve an example on that so for question number two we have the question P is inversely proportional to Q squared. Now if Q is equal to 5, when P is equal to 2, find the positive value of Q when P is equal to 1 over 2. Now let's put down the final and initial values of P and Q. So we have initial and then final. Now when P is equal to 2, Q is equal to 5. And then the final value of P is half, that is 1 over 2. So we are going to find 
the final value of Q. Now we have the relation P is inversely proportional to Q squared. So we can write P is inversely proportional to Q squared. Now this is equal to K over Q squared. Now we know the initial values of P and Q respectively. So we are going to find the constant K. Now K is equal to P times Q squared. So basically you just cross multiply. So K times 1 is K and then P times Q squared is PQ squared. So K is equal to, we have P to be 2. And then times, we have Q to be 5. So we have 5 squared. Now 5 squared is 25. So 2 times 25 is equal to 50. So we have K, the constant, to be equal to 50. Now since K is equal to 50, and then we know the final value of P, that is 1 over 2, we are going to find the positive value of Q. Now from this equation, we can make Q squared the subject. So we have K equals P times Q squared. So we divide through by P, and then we have Q squared equals K over P. Now because we are looking for Q, then we are going to introduce square root so that the square cancels the square root and we have Q to be equal to the square root of K over P. Now K is equal to 50. So we have 50 here and then P is equal to 1 over 2. That is half, so you can write 0 0.5. Now this is going to give us the square root of 100. Now the square root of 100 is equal to plus or minus 10. Now negative 10 times negative 10 will give you 100. And then 10 times 10 will also give you 100. But from the question, we are asked to find the positive value of Q. So we are interested in the positive value that is 10. So Q is equal to 10. So the final value for Q is equal to 10. So that's it for today's video. If you like the content of this video, feel free to like, comment and share among friends. Don't forget to subscribe to receive more interesting videos. In the next video, we are going to solve more complex examples on direct variation and inverse variation. Bye-bye.